What is going on, guys? My name is Jack McNeil of BaseballCentral.com. I just returned from Nashville yesterday after a long week there. Slept in today and woke up to the biggest free agent, the biggest position player free agent on the market, deciding to go with the Chicago Cubs over the St. Louis Cardinals and Washington Nationals. This is big news. Jason Hayward has intensified this Cardinal Cub rivalry and left the classiest fans in baseball, the St. Louis Cardinals, fleeing on Twitter, scurrying about to call Jason Hayward a traitor, throw his jersey in the uh, trash and say, I hope he uh, hurts his ACLs. Now, as a Cardinal fan myself, I will say very mild-tempered, uh, I understand why Jason Hayward left, and it is time for the St. Louis Cardinals to scurry and make their moves that they were planning to do this offseason. Now, Jason Hayward word why why am I not surprised that he left I am a bit surprised he did not sign with the Cardinals to be honest with you because the Cardinals made Jason Hayward their number one priority the Chicago Cubs interestingly enough went into this offseason saying that they were not going to be on a big spending spree instead this week they made some of the biggest splashes outside of the Diamondbacks and even when the Diamondbacks made those splashes uh, the Shelby Miller trade somehow involved with Jason Hayward there too as he was traded for Hayward from the St. Louis Cardinals to the Braves uh, you know this past season and the Diamondbacks were heavily criticized because he gave away a bunch of prospects, including three first rounders and one first overall pick. So the Chicago Cubs go out. They say they're not on a big spending spree. They get Ben Zobris, trade Starling Castro to the Yankees, give Zobris a second base spot. Many people, you know, plotted their move there. I mean, he is 34, but he's been one of the better players in baseball. He's underrated, maybe so underrated that he's overrated, but he doesn't get a ton of money. You know, some numbers were out there that he was going to get paid $80 million. And for his versatility, $56 million on a four-year deal isn't bad. He's a winning player. He's been on winning teams. He was with the Royals last year. He's played under Joe Madden, now with the Chicago Cubs. And then now you're looking at a situation where the Cubs made Jason Hayward a priority, just as the St. Louis Cardinals made Jason Hayward the only priority. You know, the St. Louis Cardinals went into this offseason hoping for David Price, saying that they were going to flex their payroll muscle. You know, this is a year that they can really go for it because there's two very unique free agents. David Price, they lose out the bidding to the Boston Red Sox, and then you have a situation with Jason Hayward, their guy for the next 10 years supposedly, 26 years old, is not a power hitter, but is one of the best outfielders in the game. His wins above replacement over six last year, and the Cardinals lose out their top two players uh, in terms of wins above replacement to the Chicago Cubs. John Lackey and Jason Hayward were uh, 6.5 and 5 point something respectively for those two, and our are both now on the Chicago Cubs teams uh, for a total of, let's see, 184 on the Jason Hayward deal and 32 on the Lackey deal. So, you know, $210 million or so. And they have uh, two of the St. Louis Cardinals' best players from last year. It's funny how that works. So, again, when I say the rivalry has escalated, it has. Now, let's look at how much better the Chicago Cubs team is after signing, excuse me, Jason Hayward to an eight year, $184 million deal. But is it a really an eight-year deal? I mean, that's the that's the question. It's there's an opt out uh, after three years. Most contracts now are never really the full contract, except of course that classic Albert Pujols contract that was signed a few years back, the ten-year contract. Now, for the St. Louis Cardinals, going back to them, I hate to do it all the time, but uh, this is a really defining moment in their offseason. I think if you're going to pinpoint one moment, it would be the David Price uh, missing out on David Price, and then they refocus their attention on Hayward, and the Cubs grab them off the table. So this is a big deal for the St. Louis Cardinals because it is showing that the Cubs-Cardinals rivalry is real and will continue to get uh, more escalation there as the Cubs you know, swiped out two of the Cardinals' best pitchers uh, or best players. So let's look at this Cubs lineup now uh, and this deal a little bit more so. The projected lineup is now Ben Zobris, Jason Hayward, Anthony Rizzo, Chris Bryant, Kyle Schwarber, Jorge Soler, uh, Miguel Montero, and Addison Russell. Let's remember how this team has been built. Russell was traded in a deal for Jeff Samarjo when the Cubs were not winning. Uh, you look at Anthony Rizzo. He was traded for Andrew Kastner. I mean, this team has been built uh, fantastically by Theo Epstein and, and all the others involved in this organization. The rotation, Jake Arrieta, John Lester, who they made the commitment to last season. John Lackey, former Cardinal there, only paying $16 million. If he is even close to what he did for the Cardinals last year, that is a bargain in this pitcher's market. Jason Hamill, Kyle Hendricks, and they signed Trevor Kale and traded uh, for Adam Warren as they gave away uh, Starling Castro. Now, the interesting part with the Cubs, again, as I mentioned, uh, I think they beat the Cardinals on sales pitch, not necessarily the amount of money. The Nationals uh, reports show that they might have 
have offered him $200 million. And some people thought that he would sign for more than $200 million. Because, uh, not that he's the greatest player who's ever lived, but because he's 26 and is one of the best outfielders in the game, an all-around player. It represents not the need for solely power in the outfield, this 30, 30 home run threat. You don't necessarily need that. And although Jason Hayward has hit 27 home runs before and was that power guy in his sophomore campaign, he has since had consistent numbers and not very much power. So, you know, when you're signing a guy like Hayward, you have to understand you're signing a guy for his defense, for his speed, for his base running, for his ability to hit the ball, something that the Chicago Cubs had a great offense but a lot of strikeouts. And it's a young team. Now, if the Cubs want to continue with this mold of getting away from the strikeouts and more on contact level, Ben Zobris obviously fit into that. Trading Javier Baez might make sense. I mean, the guy uh, will and is striking out a lot, and he is not needed right now. I mean, if you're going with the Zobris there at second base and you have Russell at shortstop, you can afford to trade Baez. And that's what's so incredible with this team is the position player depth that they have going into the offseason and right now. They're able to, if they want, to improve the rotation, and I'm sure they want to do so. I think that's the last missing piece uh, for them to be the favorites for not only the Central, but also the World Series. Uh, excuse me, I think they're probably already favorites for the Central right now, but if they add a starting pitching piece, uh, I think they're the clear favorites. Um, but I want to go back on one thing. Uh, the, the moment that defined the offseason, I think, for the Cardinals, and it in turn really affects the Cubs which is missing out on David Price. I think that if David Price had signed with the St. Louis Cardinals, we'd be looking very differently at these two teams. You'd have a rotation for the Cardinals of Price, Wainwright, Walker, Martinez, uh, you know, and, and the list goes on and on. You can you know slot who you want in the five spot. But for right now, you are now looking at uh, an issue where, yes, the Cardinals rotation was the best in baseball or the best in the National League last year in terms of ERA, and that was without Wainwright. That being said, you lose Lynn. Now you lose Lackey to the Cubs. And now if the Cubs get another starter, in addition to Ben Zobras, in addition to the natural progression of their position players, in addition to Jason Hayward, that's not only an addition for the Cubs, but a subtraction for the St. Louis Cardinals. As they've lost, again, their top producing players from last year, Lackey and Hayward. So the St. Louis Cardinals could have dramatically shifted this whole offseason, or at least the narrative, by signing David Price. David Price could have dominated the NL Central as he's pitching the AL East his whole career. Now, the Cubs have put the Cardinals on the defensive, made them look like in their year where they could spend money, and in a year where the Cubs front office says, we're not going to spend a ton of money, make the Cardinals look the cheap guys, and now they have to go out and scurry for the 31-year-old Alex Gordon instead of the 26-year-old Jason Hayward. They have to go and maybe suck it up and sign Johnny Cueto, who they do not like because of the past history between the Cardinals uh, and the Reds when he was a Red. You know, so there's a... <laughs> It's tough for Cardinal fans right now because they missed out on the top guys, the top guys who would have made sense giving long-term deals to, and now they're kind of left playing this game with the agents who are basically controlling the future fate of the St. Louis Cardinals outfield. For the Chicago Cubs, however, they are in a great position because they can trade from positions of strength to get another starting pitcher. For example, there's some guys on the market. I mean, you're looking at uh, Rays potentially could be a trading uh, trading partner. Tyson Ross of the Padres, Danny Sanders. Salazar and Carlos Correa of uh, Carlos Carrasco, excuse me, uh, of the Indians. Wouldn't that be incredible? Uh, Correa. No, I mean, the Cubs do not need position players. They have a surplus. They want a starter, and I think they need a starter. Uh, you know, they have some depth in starting pitching, but they need a, a, a younger, very talented starter to kind of plug up that rotation. Uh, the Cubs are in a great spot, though. Again, I don't want to put them as favorites for the division just yet or the World Series. Uh, you know, officially until we see what the Cardinals uh, counter, until we see even really what the Pirates do. But uh, as of right now, it's very easy to say the Cubs are in a better position than the Cardinals long term and maybe even short term as they, they just lost a few, uh, you know, more games in the St. Louis Cardinals last year. That being said, the Cardinals are getting Adam Wainwright back, although the Cardinals still need a starting pitcher and they missed out on the best ones available, the ones who can make that biggest impact. And John Lackey is now gone. And they have also missed out on their big bat, Jason Hayward, who was very valuable to them last year. That being said, the St. Louis Cardinals have a lot of pieces 
uh, right? Jed Jerko, they traded for him. They can shift a lot of these guys around. When they want a bat uh, to complement Colton Wong, they have Jerko. Uh, when they want someone to slide in a shortstop, they have someone who can slide in uh, in replace of Johnny Peralta. They have Matt Carpenter. At Matt Adams, who was gone all last year, might be able to make a bigger impact that year, this year. We'll have a full season of Brandon Moss to see what he could do and contribute. You have Matt Holiday, who was hurt for most of the year last year, did not have much of an impact. He is coming back. Uh, you now have a situation where Pescati could be progressing, or they go out and get Gordon, uh, and they have Grichik. You know, another year of Grichik who could progress to even a better player. He had 17 home runs last year. Yadier Molina, if he's healthy the whole year, what can he do? Adam Wainwright coming back. There are some aging players, no doubt, but there's a young core of Wong and Carpenter and Grichik and Pescati and Adams that are exciting. So the Cardinals are not out of it. It is not this idea that, oh, the Cubs got Hayward, it's done. I don't, I don't buy into that at all, not just because I'm a Cardinal fan, but I think people are uh, maybe forgetting Wainwright you know, is coming back. Losing Lynn is a big loss, which is why the Cardinals have to go out and sign a pretty good starting pitcher or trade for one. Trade does not seem likely because I don't think they have the pieces to get a trade done or it wouldn't make sense to, to go out and, and give away all these young pieces like the Diamondbacks did. I think they're going to be regretting that trade in a few years when the Braves uh, you know, have the best shortstop in the game or something crazy like that. Um, you know, so... I think depending on what the Cardinals can do, we'll have to gauge this. But right now, this represents the sales pitch. And this is a very good sales pitch for the Cubs. You know, if you are a player, you played with the Cardinals last year, you got beat by the Cubs in the playoffs, what team are you going to want to go to? The team that has a few aging pieces and are, you know, might win a World Series in the next few years, you know, has a good chance to win the Cardinals, I think. Um, but Or the Cubs, who if they win a World Series, would be the biggest thing. Uh, it would be huge. I mean, to be a part of that team is so historic. And I think that sales pitch trumps everything. Not only would be historic, but they actually can do it. So here is a result. We beat you last year, Jason Hayward. We can go to the World Series, and we can win it, and we can do it partly because of you. And I don't see how any team beats that sales pitch. In addition, of course, you offer $184 million uh, and give him an opt-out, two opt-outs, excuse me, in three years if he reaches enough plate appearances. David Price and Jason Hayward, the two biggest free agents this year, will be on the market yet again. So it is a win-win for Jason Hayward. He gets to play three years on the Chicago Cubs. If he wants to opt out, he can and sign probably an even bigger contract. Uh, you know, Or the Cubs are stuck in this eight-year, $184 million deal if he doesn't produce. But I, it's very unlikely that he, he won't produce because uh, we've seen him very consistently uh, of late, and he is only 26. So great deal by the Chicago Cubs. They now look to be the favorites in the Central, but I will not say officially yet until we see what the Cardinals do. That being said, the Cardinals have missed out already on the top free agent guys. The Cubs have a great young core. Their lineup looks uh, to be the best in the National League, at least from my perspective. Uh, so, you know, it, it is not too hard to, to foresee the Cubs being the toughest uh, team in the division, but I will un I will wait to officially announce them the favorites until we see how teams react to this. Either way, it is going to be fun division to watch because the Cardinal and Cub rivalry is real. You just stole the Cardinals' two best pitchers in free agency, uh, and now the Cardinals are left in a position, a defensive position, and are scurrying. Um, and Cardinal fans are are pretty upset. So if you're a Cubs fan, you got to be happy to see some Cardinal fans get it under their skin. So thanks for watching, guys. My name is Jack McNeil of Baseball Essential. If you want to tell me how I am very wrong in evaluating this deal, go ahead and tweet at me at Jack McNeil44 and check into BaseballEssential.com. Thanks.